I Due Foscari Libretto by Francesco Maria Piave First performance on the 3rd of November, 1844 at the Teatro Argentina, Rome. After reading Byron's drama, The Two Foscari, Verdi wrote to his librettist Piave, I noticed that the play does not quite have the theatrical grandeur needed for an opera. So rack your brains and try to find something which will make a bit of a splash, particularly in the first act. Take a good deal of trouble with it, because it's a fine subject, delicate and full of pathos. Venice, the 15th century. Jacopo Foscari, the doge's son, has been arrested for murder and waits to be summoned by the council. In the aria Dal più remoto esilio, Jacopo becomes lost in nostalgic thought as he bids a final farewell to Venice. Lucrezia, Jacopo's wife, despairs and attempts to save her husband Jacopo at all costs. She is in the company of her maids as she prays to God. Jacopo is in prison, where he awaits his sentence. He is startled by the vision of the spirit of the Conte di Carmagnola, who was sentenced and condemned to death for treason. Jacopo faints in terror. Lucrezia and Jacopo curse Loredano, a member of the Council of Ten. Doge attempts to calm the husband and wife and denounces the inflexibility of the Venetian laws. In a letter, Donizetti told the story of a staging in Vienna during which this quartet was the cause of much amusement due to the similarities it shares with a waltz by Johann Strauss Sr. At this moment, Jacopo senses his death coming closer.
the Council of Ten banishes Jacopo to the island of Crete. The Doge receives a written confession that clears Jacopo of all accusations, but it is too late. Jacopo has already died of unbearable grief. The council forces the old doge to resign. His pain over the loss of his son and the fate that his public reserves for him unravel in an intimate and sorrowful melody. The bitter dissonances that Verdi wanted fill this music with pathos, and as a result, it is considered one of the noblest Verdi pieces for the baritone. Hurt and offended, the doge goes away with Lucrezia and dies with the tolling of the church bells of San Marco. Following the international success of Ernani, Verdi needed to quickly find an opera that would be suitable for the Teatro Argentina in Rome, and he gave Piave the job of preparing a libretto that would be acceptable for the Roman authorities. At first, Verdi and Piave had Byron's drama Marin Fariero in mind, but Verdi already feared there may be problems. Just in case the police don't allow it, we'll have to think of a quick alternative, and I suggest the two Foscari. I like the plot, and the outline is already there in Venice. I sent it to the Presidenza. If you want to make some alterations, do so, but stick closely to Byron. Of the dramas that Byron set in the beautiful but equally cruel Venice, Marin Faliero was possibly the one that was most suited to being set to music, due to the dramatic force of the story and the strongly defined character. But Verdi was too late. Donizetti had already staged his version of Marin Faliero in 1835, and so Verdi was obliged to concentrate on Jacopo Foscari. Three years later, following the premiere of the opera in Milan, the composer wrote to Piave, In subjects which are naturally gloomy, if you're not careful, you end up with a deadly bore. As, for instance, I due Foscari, which has too unvarying a colour from beginning to end. However, on closer inspection of the early Verdi operas, this title, along with Macbeth, is one that marks a clear break with tradition. The levels of intimacy and pathos that are achieved through simple melodies and careful, unconventional orchestration put on show the best of Verdi's traits. In the classification of Verdi's most performed operas in the world, I Due Foscari comes in 16th place. In the classification of the most performed operas in the world, I Due Foscari comes in 213th place. <laughs>